Go first, go first. All right, God is good um, because he sets the captive free. I was captive to sin. It had a hold of me, um, and I couldn't get free. Um, but then I met uh, the love of my life, and he forgave me. Hallelujah. And he made me clean, and he made me a new person. So he's who's the son is set free is free. So thank God he sets the captive free. Yes, Lord. My first one is love. And I had First John 3, 1, which people have said before, you know, behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the children. Imagine it, the children of God, the children of God. Yes, and um, I want to read just a couple of things out of Scripture, real quick, Romans 5, 6 through 8. And it says... For when we were still without strength, this is the new King James Version, in due time, and in the notes it says, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. And the other one is in Psalms 8. It just blows me away, this psalm, because it says, O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. And then over in verse 3 it says, When I consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you um, are mindful of him? And mindful, it says down in the note, says that you even pay attention or care for him. Isn't that amazing? Yes. And for you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. That's what he says about us, that we're just a little lower. That means he bit below the angels, and he crowned us with glory and honor. So that is what love means to me. And I was thinking this morning when I was getting ready, in um, 1 Corinthians 13 it says, And these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest is love. And if he said that, then he's going to be the greatest of all with love. So anyway, that's my first one, love. He leads me and I have purpose. It wasn't long after I was saved, God spoke to me through his word in 2 Timothy 1 9. He was saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. And, you know, I felt no longer was I wandering through life. Um, I just knew that as I sought him first and knowing that he had a holy calling for my life that I could be confident that he was leading me according to his plan and his purpose. And I just, I thank God that he does. He leads and he's a personal God and we do have a purpose in life. So it's good. My second one is Father. He is the greatest father that could ever be, of course. And uh, most of you know that I was adopted or some of you know that I was adopted. And uh, the scripture that I have for this one is Psalm 2710. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. That's the King James Version. And it was explained to me as when you have little children and they have their hands to you and you reach down and you lift them up in your arms, that's how that scripture was explained to me. The Living Bible says the Lord will hold me close. You know, my dad and me, we were very close. My dad and I were very close. And the day that they went to get me down in Lincoln, and they came home, I'm probably going to have a tear or two here. My dad took me to his friend's house, Glenn Miller, Decatur, Nebraska, and he held me out and he said, look what I got. And I mean, that was so precious when this person told me about that story, because I was just a kid, I didn't know about it. And anyway, that's the way I think God looks at us. When he sees someone come to Christ, he sees someone get saved. He says to everybody around him in heaven, look what I got. You know, I mean, it's so precious, you know. And my dad, um, when we'd get home late at night from somewhere when I was a kid, sometimes I'd pretend I was asleep so my dad would carry me in the house, you know. And it wasn't really that I didn't want to walk in the house. It was just that I wanted my dad's loving, strong arms around me carrying me in the house. And that's how God is, you know. That's the way he is. So anyway, I just wanted to say that my dad was my greatest um, cheerleader. He was my greatest supporter, my greatest encourager. He was the one that helped me with my homework, you know. And, and so, Father, for me, I had a great experience, you know, with the dad. But that's why it wasn't hard for me to see God as a loving father. So that's my, that's my second one.
My third is, he is my strength and teacher. Psalm 144, 1. Blessed be the Lord, my strength, which, teach, which teaches my hand to war. Um, we often war against ourselves, the world, and the enemy. And um, though I'm walking in his will, I often cry, help, Lord. You know, I'm faced with this situation, Lord, I don't know what to do. Sometimes I ask, why? And, um, and then I find myself asking, okay, Lord, what would you do? And I just know that he gives me the strength through his word alone and through his spirit just to, to walk the path that he set before me. Um, and I know that I'm constantly learning. I, I'm so thankful he's my teacher because there's so many things I don't know. And so many things, like, Lord, I do want to, to know and to learn. And he's so faithful just to, to teach you. And um, I've learned so much just about his character and then just so much about him molding me as the potter and me being the clay. So I'm thankful that he's a wonderful and the best teacher and um, just gives me strength for everything I go through. Mm -hmm. My third one is faithfulness and especially protection. And in the Living Bible, Psalm 57, 2 and 3 says, I cry out to God most high, to God who will fulfill his purpose for me. He will send help from heaven to save me. Rescue me from those who are out to get me. My God will send forth his unfailing love and faithfulness. So that's my third one because he is just that to me and more. My next one is I'm complete in him. And this might sound a little bit of a tongue twister, but I have no need that cannot be met but through Jesus alone. I have no need that cannot be met through Jesus alone. It doesn't matter what the need is. Um, only he can meet that need. And the search is over. I don't need to search for anything but him. And he meets every need. Um, I could list a whole bunch of needs, but all our needs are different this morning. And I know for me personally, every need. I don't have to search anywhere else. And he has all the answers. He's all I need. Colossians 2.10 says, I'm complete in him which is head of all principality and power. Amen. Amen. Are we on three or four? Four. Oh, yeah. Forgiveness. What Cameron said. He's our forgiver. Amen. First John 1 9 says, If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. From all our sins. Every, 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 every. The Living Bible says every wrong. And you know, Matthew 18, 22, when Peter said, how many times, you know, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up till seven times? And Jesus said, no, 70 times seven. That's 490 if I, you know, multiply him right. But anyway, you know, he's just saying however many times we need to, that's what we have to do. And if he said that about us, then the same is true of him because he wouldn't tell us to do something that he wouldn't do himself. So as many times as we ask forgiveness, he's going to forgive us because he says so in his word. So anyway, that's number four. Okay, number five. Um, we're in the prayer meeting this morning. I just really felt like um, God was showing us, even just about myself, that I'm very thankful that he's faithful to the Jonas and faithful to the Abrahams because I felt like I've been both of those many times. And, you know, to Jonah, that God told Jonah, God has told me to do things, and oftentimes I felt like, Lord, I don't want to. And then he prepares the whale, and I'm in the whale, and it's like, okay, this is a terrible place to be. I don't want to be here. And I say, Lord, okay, forgive me, and I'm willing, and I help me. And so he's faithful to the Jonas. And to Abraham, um, Abraham trusted the Lord. He told Abraham to go out to a place he didn't know. And oftentimes, as we're walking with the Lord, he's always pushing us to a place we're not familiar with and we don't know. And it's the verse that comes to mind is, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not into your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. And the two things that stuck out to me was, in with all your heart, and in all your ways, acknowledge him. And and that's what I feel that when I do that, when I do that with all my heart and um, in all my ways acknowledge him, he truly does direct your paths. And 
he's faithful to keep his promises. I've seen God give me promises through his word about situations, and yes, he's answered them. But God has given me promises today that are absolutely impossible. But I know that he's going to be faithful to fill, fulfill those things, just like God was faithful to Abraham and giving him a son. And God doesn't want me to do it and, and produce it in my strength and in my way, in my flesh, just like Abraham tried to. But he wants me just to believe and to trust. That's all he requires. And I feel God you know, saying that to me again. Just trust and just believe. Don't don't quit and don't give up and say and, and quit praying and quit believing because then it ties God's God's hands. And I know He's just saying to me, you know, I have promises. I'm faithful to fulfill them. Just keep believing, keep trusting, keep praying, and He's going to do it. So He's so Amen. good to be faithful. Amen. Glory. Amen. That's right. He gets all the glory. <laughs> My number five is forever. You know, we have an eternal, forever God. Our king of righteousness and truth. He's going to be eternal. And is eternal. And in Malachi 3.6, he says, I am the Lord. I do not change. So we don't have to worry about, is God going to change his mind about what's in this word? He is not because, you know what? It says that forever, Psalm 119.89, your word is settled in heaven. So he's not going to change what he said in here. And he's, uh, he will always be our Father. What we just said this morning, so many things that were said was exactly what I wrote down here. He will be our forever Father, friend, forgiver. I had that written down already. <laughs> Savior, helper, counselor, protector, and the lover of our souls forever. And so um, Isaiah 9, 7 says, Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forever, it says. So, you know, we when we're in God's government, we don't have to worry about politicians, elections, the changing of people and position and power, because our awesome God will reign on his throne for all eternity, forever. Oh, you gave your pick. Okay. Well, anyway, I just want to say I'm so humble even to be up here doing this. Because before I was saved, the life that I lived, I would not be here. And it was only God's mercy and grace that I am here. And the way that he's blessed me richly and abundantly above anything I could ever ask or thought. And that's why I'm here, and I love him so much. And I'm so thankful. Thank you.